Hey YouTube, this is Troy. Uh, today in this video I'm going to cover carbon dosing uh, specifically with bio pellets. And I'm going to talk about, you know, generally how do bio pellets work, the pros and cons of using bio pellets, so some of the things to watch out for. You know, I have a couple reactors that I'm viewing right now and uh, I'm going to specifically talk about why I chose the reactor that I chose. Um, and how that your hardware kind of plays a role in, in my opinion, the good and bad of, of carbon dosing using bio pellets. Um, that might be a debate though, because that's, that's largely my opinion. You know, you can kind of draw your own conclusions and there might be others out there that have tremendous success with a, a reactor that isn't of the flavor of the particular reactor that I chose. So, um, so again, bio pellets, what are they? They're a pure source of carbon a uh, source of carbon that bacteria can easily break down and use. The intention of carbon dosing with bio pellets is to, is to foster the growth of bacteria and that bacteria will outcompete any other algae or any kind of other organism that wants to consume the nutrients. In this case it's usually nuisance algae that we're focused on. But the intention is that bacteria will outcompete that algae to consume nitrates and phosphates and the tumbling action that you see inside the reactor is pretty important. Um, basically, as the bacteria is is growing and consuming nutrients in your in your tank, what ends up happening through the tumbling action is the bacteria are pushed off of the bio pellets and then released through the outlet. Um, of your reactor back into your system. Um, so you want a, a fairly gentle tumbling action. You, you could maybe argue that my tumbling here is maybe a little too strong, but I think it's pretty close. Um, you don't want to have an aggressive tumbling action that actually shreds the bacteria off of the um, bio pellet, but you don't want such a limited tumbling or no tumbling at all because you know your the bacteria will kind of change in such a way that they can actually produce toxic gas and then if that is then eventually released into your tank it can um, basically allow your tank to crash so you know in the case of a power outage for example where your bio pellets are, are left stagnant for a period of time that can be very negative to your tank once the power comes back on and the, and the pellets start moving again. Um, any kind of gas that's built up is going to be released into your tank. It's actually one of the negatives. Um, however, you know, if you're under that situation where you have a power outage, uh, I think your best course of action is just you know, basically unplug the reactor. Once the power is back on, then you can remove the pellets, do a quick rinse, um, basically, that'll rinse off any of the, any of you, you know, any of the gas or whatnot, uh, or the chemical buildup that you may have. Uh, you won't kill off all the bacteria that's on the pellets if you rinse it, um, and then return it back to your reactor and fire the thing back up, and you should be good to go. Um, you know, the biggest thing to focus on is some of the cons. You know, obviously the no no tumbling activity is, is one that's that's important um, the the cyanobacteria so depending on what reactor you're using um, and this is actually why I picked my particular reactor but depending on what reactor you, you now see here you have I have a little FOSS band if I zoom out here real quick this is basically two little fishes FOSS band reactor but it's got the kit for if you wanted to make this, the mod, if you wanted to make this um, a bio pellet reactor. And basically, really what it is, is just a mesh on the bottom and then mesh on the top. And that basically makes, allows for the pellets not to either sink below the bottom plate or escape the reactor through the top plate. Um, and you see a lot of these, now, there's different flavors of this particular reactor, but the, the concept's the same where you have, an, you have an external pump that is feeding the reactor, 
the pump is driving the tumbling action and then as the water fills up it's going to go through the outlet out to your tank so via a valve on the top you can control the amount of tumbling that your bio pellets are are doing and it's important to maintain the degree of tumbling here um, as you see you know with the other reactor that's behind it um, the thing that I didn't like about this particular reactor and this is what kind of comes into kind of the, the, the next two negative aspects of of bio pellet or the use of bio pellets is that the amount of water you're pumping into this particular reactor and any reactor similar to this is the same amount of water that's coming out of the reactor so you know basically if if you are if you dump a bunch of bio pellets into this reactor this two little fishes reactor and you fire the thing up um, you know over the course of time as bacteria build up in that you're going to have a tremendous amount of bacteria working in your system, a tremendous amount of bacteria moving back into your system. And in some cases, your system will get shocked because of that. And if you're releasing a tremendous amount of bacteria back into your system and you're not able to skim it all off or your system isn't used to that level of bacteria, then yes, you can get cyanobacteria. Typically, that means that you've introduced too many bio pellets at, you know, too quickly. Um, you know the other the other concern that you would have is a sudden nutrient drop in your tank so if you have a lot of corals in your tank corals are, are corals are using nitrate and phosphate they use it not as um, not as intense as a bacteria would or an algae would root would but they benefit for from low traces of nitrate and phosphate in your tank um, so you don't really want to dump a bunch of bio pellets in here completely take your nutrient levels down to zero or drop it suddenly and then basically you know freak out all of your coral because now whatever nutrients they were using are completely gone so if you have a reactor like this two little fishes or something a little bit more robust but the concept is the same basically what that means is that the pump that's controlling the tumbling is also so the amount of water coming in to control the tumbling is the same amount of water being exiting. Then you want to start very slowly when you introduce bio pellets. And when you first put your bio pellets in, you know, use you know 25% of the recommended dose of bio pellets and let it go for a month. And then you know monitor your level, your nutrient levels, and then once you get past that. You know, you should see your skimmer pick up in not only its skimmate that it's producing, but also the, the, the smell of the skimmate is a real good key that the bacteria is starting to be present in your tank. Then add another 20% and continue to do that month by month by month until you get to a full, uh, you know, a full level of, of what's recommended for your particular size of your tank. So I think what most people do when they get in trouble, when they have a cyano outbreak or if they shock their system and the corals start bleaching out is they just go with the full dose of bio pellets in a reactor like this and then they get in trouble. So I wanted to kind of make sure I state that before I move on to the particular reactor that I purchased because it does not function this way. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Now this reactor is from Reef Dynamics and the reason why I picked this reactor is that the pump you see there is circulating the water in the reactor but the water that's being circulated in the reactor is not um, is independent of the water actually flowing from my system to the reactor and back out of the reactor into my system so I could actually if you see that valve on top that's the outlet and you can see back there the white hose connector there that's the inlet so and the red valve there is basically kind of controlling the tumbling that's going on. So if I shut that valve off on the top, that means there is no water coming from my system into this reactor. It's just the water that is in, that's contained inside the tube, the reactor tube, and then also the plumbing that's coming out of the tube into back into the reactor to handle the tumbling. 
What this affords me to do is go ahead and dump the full dosage of bio pellets into this reactor, but control the amount of water that's coming into this reactor from my system, therefore the amount of water coming out of this reactor into my system. Um, and I can gradually ramp up the flow of water coming out of my system into this reactor and back, basically back into my skimmer. And um, so that's basically the primary reason why I purchased this particular reactor. That pump there is largely, the sole purpose of that pump is to keep that material tumbling at the rate that you see there. It, it really does, it does little to, well, it, it's still used to draw from my tank, but what controls how much water comes back into my system and actually how much water is being drawn out of my tank is that top valve right there. So if I open that wide open, there's gonna be a bunch of water moving through this system, coming out of my tank and going back into my tank. Uh, if I, I can completely shut that off and then all the water, there is no water coming out of my system moving in through this reactor. Um, so that is the particular reason why I, I purchased this reactor. Now this reactor is, is somewhat expensive. I think it's right around the 300, 350 range. But, um, you know, you kind of get, in, in this hobby, you kind of get what you pay for. And, and that was something that was very important to me, is to um, make sure that I can independently control the tumbling of the media from how much water is moving in and out of my system through this reactor. And um, that was pretty key. So, actually, you can tell if I shut this down, you'll see the tumbling will slow down. Basically, the amount of water coming into the system will slow down. And I can adjust this valve here, sorry for the camera work, and really ramp up the tumbling. So this would be far too much tumbling in the system as, as an example. So, if I go ahead and switch everything back to the way it was before, So, just an example of, you know, how you can adjust this particular one. You know, it took a little while to get this one fine-tuned, but once you get it set up and you get it working, you know, it's, it's not that difficult. Um, very well built. I, I can't, uh, I have nothing negative to say about this particular reactor from Reef Dynamics. Um, they do hand build it. They do build them on on demand, so they won't start building yours until you actually order it. So it does take a bit of time to get it. Um, the one thing that I would comment on, and those of you using uh, bio pellets probably have already experienced this, you got to soak those bio pellets for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. I've soaked mine in salt water. Really, the water I ended up dumping into uh, this reactor. I don't know if that was good or bad, but. I'd soak them. Every once in a while I'd go in there and stir them up, and, but you need to soak them. Um, they're really not going to be building any bacteria in that 24 to 48 hours, any significant level of bacteria in my opinion. Um, so this has been on my system for about three weeks. Um, I'm continuing to dose Dr. Tim's um, waste away in conjunction with this. My tank is definitely not out of the woods as far as, far as its algae problem. Um, but uh, so I will continue to dose uh, Dr. Tim's waste away while I have this carbon reactor running at the same time. Um, I'm going to quickly show you how I have it plumbed into my system. If you uh, open up the doors here real quick to the sump. Okay, so the inlet is that tube right there. Basically, it comes up and it goes out right there to the reactor. That's providing the water to the reactor. The return is back there. Comes down through here. And then, oh, let's see if we shall focus here. There we go. Um, I kind of created a little, uh, oh, I don't know, you know, out of a crate, a little holder for my tube so it could basically 
all the water coming out of the reactor is going right into the inlet of my skimmer. So that's basically how the plumbing goes. I'm still running GFO. You know, people have asked me, hey, you know, if I get my carbon reactor up and running, do I need to run GFO anymore? Um, you know, from what I've read from others, um, I think you don't want to do anything super quick. So, you know, if you get your carbon reactor up and running, um, you know, you can play around with it. You may want to, you know, after you get it up and running, you know it's working because of your skim mate. You can tell, you'll tell, you'll know. Your skim production will increase and it will stink when you clean out the cup. Um, you can back off the level of GFO. You can try it, you know. Put in, you know, as you ramp up your bio pellets, slowly reduce the level of GFO you're putting in your reactor. You might find that over time, you don't need either as much GFO or GFO at all. And the reactor is really covering everything you need for your particular tank. Um, right now, myself, because of the state of my tank, I'm gonna continue running the full dose of GFO and continue to uh, replace my GFO on my, tip, on my, on my, uh, my current schedule. So, um, all right, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in this particular video. You know, if you guys have questions or concerns or comments, you know, feel free to post them. And I will, uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, later.